Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, you're listening to Pause of the Multiverse, Season 4. We're playing 5th Edition D&D, and I'm Jimmy, the DM for our game in Eberron. Joining me are four of my best friends. I'm Andy, and I play the Green Warden, named the Green Warden, who traveled through millennia of the future of Eberron, returned alive, and didn't even get a t-shirt. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jeppe. I play Alfonso Carlucci Roccatella, and for the low price of beating me at cards, I will make you your own little doodad. Ah. Uh, I'm Scala. I play Istvan of Clan Gunvald. Good with metal, bad with riddles. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Alexa, and I play Hematite, who is very smart for a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, probably gonna fight a dragon, right? Oh, we'll see how it goes. I advocate talking to it. Yeah, let's reason about it. No. You're gonna, call, you're gonna fight a dragon. You're gonna fight it. You're gonna fight it so hard. Here's episode 11. Last time. The Green Warden escaped a time-dilating demiplane and saved the life of a blue dragon. Then, along with Istvan, Alfonso, and Hematite, proceeded to another chamber of the Cat's Eye, home to the Sphinx Flamewind, and a team of intelligent cats who interpret her cryptic words as prophecy. Dissatisfied with the cat's inability or unwillingness to provide the party with concrete cosmological truths, they decided to address Flamewind directly. The Sphinx painfully flooded their psyches with intentionally obfuscated knowledge of the pasts, presents, and futures. Upon leaving the chamber, the party found themselves once more on the ground floor of the Cat's Eye, the inn seemingly abandoned for years. As they walked out the front door, they encountered the expedition team, who they had evaded for nearly two weeks and had presumed Istvan and Alfonso dead. Before they had a chance to catch up, a black dragon entered the scene and demanded the soul of he who defies death, referring, of course, to Luciana. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. All right, so you just walked out of the cat's eye. It's morning. The shards of Sybaris are shining in the sky, and this inn behind you now is ruined. It's collapsed in some places. It has a green tinge to it, and the nature around here is a little bit overgrown. You are facing down the entire expedition team, who's basically standing in a straight line right now, and just past that, in the middle of the road, this huge dragon. It is probably almost two stories tall. It's got black scales that look like they're almost peeling off, and this horrifying gaunt face with skeletal features, bony curved horns, and a ridge that goes from a fin on his head all the way down his back to the end of his long whip-like tail, powerful leathery wings with tattered edges. This thing looks like fucking angel of death. I've spent the last few days terrified before we even deal with it. Oh, good. How far away is he from us, roughly? I would say that you're probably about 10 feet from the expedition, and then this dragon's about 30 feet behind them. Okay, so 40 feet from us. Close. From where you're standing, you're looking up at this thing. I look up at everything, but... (laughs) Cool. All right. So as the dragon swoops down, I think the party would immediately see Alfonso is intimidated and scared, for sure. But after a moment, Alfonso will steal himself at the words that the dragon said, and clenching his fist, Alfonso would say, you certainly may try, but it will be over my dead body. And if I may, I think I'm going to get this shit going, and I'm just going to fire a lightning launcher. Okay, great. So we're going to roll initiative right here, then. Okay. That's not good. I got a 17. I got a 7. I got an 18. A dirty 20. Warden, your dex mod is minus 1. Minus 1. When you said that this is an open book fight, how open book is it? I did tell you you were fighting a black dragon. (laughs) Okay. Okay, cool. I didn't read shit. I have the monster manual open for other purposes. Ah. Also in your head at all times. I mean, I wrote the thing. (laughs) You wrote the thing. Yeah, you wrote it. (laughs) Very careful, everyone. You have no idea what this could be capable of. Warden, go ahead and roll something for dragon knowledge. I will make that Arcana 15. So... You would know, Warden, that you would associate black dragons with acid damage. Mm -hmm. Their breath weapon is incredibly dangerous, corrosive acid. This is an adult black dragon. You can tell by looking at its physiology. It is huge. 
It flies real fast, Mm -hmm. and it's got claws, teeth, wings, and a tail, any of which it can use for attacking. As I recall a lot of this knowledge, and also just seeing the devastation that all of the dragons I've seen in the ancient past have done, I just end by saying, And spread out and take cover. You do not want to face its acid breath. I want to roll to see if I recognize this guy. Do I recognize this big dragon thing? So Hematite, you claim to have met dragons in the past. Roll insight. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking this big. It's a six. (laughs) I barely know what a dragon is. (laughs) On a six, you claim to have spent time with dragons. Whatever that means, they were a lot friendlier than this. This is horrifying and not someone you'd pal around with. Fuck. Okay. Gallant is up first in the order. Holy <laughs> what the fuck? What a hero. <laughs> Chad Gallant. <laughs> Chad Gallant. Chad Gallant. Leader of this expedition. The hero of the story. Oh, what a Chad. Oh my god. He... <laughs> I hope Chad gets one-shotted. That would be hilarious. Anyway, sorry. Oh god. Chad is not the villain. Fucking, uh... Rizian? God, Rizian is the villain. <laughs> Rizian sucks. Anyway, tell us what Chad does. Yeah, Gallant puts out an arm. It's just like those other big reptiles from yesterday. If we don't move, it can't see us. Oh, God. <laughs> Fool, I am no dinosaur. And Gallant is going to actually just turn and run directly in the front door of the cat's eye. With a name like Chad. Yep. Yep. Jesus. <sighs> Away with you and take cover. I expected more from you, Signore Gallant. Hematite's up next. Sweet. So how far away is this thing again? How many feet? Mechanically, it's 40 feet from you. Okay. And how tall did you say it was? Near 20 feet. Okay. How tall are the trees nearby? (laughs) Taller. This is dense jungle vegetation. Okay, cool. I'm going to run down the line of guys about halfway to the dragon. Okay. And then veer to whichever side, the closest tree there is, and then sprint up it. Okay. You can definitely get there with your movement. Yeah. And you have a climb speed. I do. I think it's equal to my speed. So cool. And your speed is now with mobile 50? 50, yeah. Holy yeah. Nice. shit. You can get 20 feet up in the nearest tree without any rolls at all. Very cool. Okay, cool. And then I sprint forward, dash to the side, jump up the tree, and then I'm going to propel myself with my claws out at the dragon's head. Or neck. Let's go with the neck. I don't think you can make that leap. Really? Yeah, you just ran 30 feet to some trees and 20 feet up a tree. We're all an athletics check to see if you do this. And you are doing this. If you fail this athletics check, this is not happening. (laughs) Okay. It's a 15. Okay, yeah, 15. You can just barely make it the distance to where this dragon is from these trees on the side of the road attacking this dragon from above. I want to rage as I'm launching myself off of the tree. That's cool. And then I am going to reckless attack. Okay, so it's a 14. Yeah, 21. 21's going to (laughs) hit. Then I rolled another one, and that's 25. And then the other one was a two, so that doesn't hit. (laughs) Two good hits there. Roll damage twice. Okay. Yeah, so it's 12 plus 11. Okay. 23. Nice. All right. So, Hematite, you launch yourself out of this tree and slash into this dragon's neck, and you land two pretty good looking hits. And if possible, because I doubt, I don't know how this works mechanically, but I'd like to, like, either hang on to his neck. Okay. And then kind of like, like if I have to slide, I'm going to try and twist myself around onto his back. Okay. I'm going to say that with your athletics check and those two landed attacks, this is a huge creature. You can just do that as a small creature. Cool. And you are in his threatened space. You are very vulnerable where you are. That's fine. <laughs> Hematite's all in. Always. He's going to get with this everything. big, stupid thing. Hematite is all in. This dragon didn't really react to what you just did. You did okay. definitely <laughs> scratch deeply, but no notable reaction. He's spitting and growling and being as ferocious as he possibly can. It's nothing. How much damage did Hematite roll up against not reacting at all? I'm uh, just curious. It was 23. Great that 23 is not even felt. That's really good. It's encouraging. Well, it's, a, you know. <laughs> Dagron. Jeppy Dagron. It's a Dagron. It's a Dagron. Yeah. Alfonso. Okay. Alfonso will almost like Mega Man charge up Luciano and get ready to shoot. But before doing that, we'll open up the panel of animals and tapping the eagle will 
use that as a mechanism for casting Hunter's Mark on this dragon. I do not want to get you out of my sights as my bonus action. And then for my action, I'm going to attack with my lightning launcher. Okay. Okay, so that is dirty 20 to hit on the first attack. That hits. Wow, that's cool. That is 21 lightning damage on the first attack. Is the D6 a one-time only thing, or is it every attack? Hunter's Mark, I think, is every attack. Holy shit. Whenever you hit it with a weapon attack. Shit. Well, I am very happy I took this feat at level eight. That is cool. I'm going to go ahead and attack again. That's 24. I know that that hits. 15 lightning damage on the second attack. And that is Alfonso's turn. Dragon's going to look to you, Alfonso. Fucking of course. Mm. Alfonso, audible gulp. You probably didn't hear that in the Discord. I definitely no, I actually heard did. it. You did? Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. Are you the one they call Luciano? He is right here, and he can speak for himself, holding up my arm. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> did not expect you to just, here's Luciano. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but I also know Luciano's only speaking in my head, so I'm basically waiting to act as translator. I see what you mean. This is the dragon's turn. Dragon's going to take flight. Dragon's going to go up about 30 feet and let out this loud, screeching, guttural, rattly roar. Everybody makes a wisdom saving throw. Oh, hey, I got one extra modifier point on my previously one modifier for wisdom. So this ought to be good. Oh, that's garbage. Ten. Yup. Six. Hematite got an 18. (laughs) Does this mean Hematite is in the air with the dragon? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yeah. And you're still in the dragon's threatened area. The dragon can attack you from anywhere it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it now. He even takes ridden dragons before. What a react. That's true. <laughs> Warden got a 23. It's the most agreeable anyone's ever been about being attacked by a dragon. Okay. <laughs> I like to think of it as I'm just as stupid as Hematite is. <laughs> oh, man. Hematite's the best. Hematite is the best. I fucking love him. Alfonso and Istvan, you are frightened. Okay. Yeah, that tracks. Yup. What does that mean? For one minute. Can't approach it, and I believe ability checks and attack rolls. That disadvantage. You can retry the saving throw at the end of every turn. No action required. And who else is frightened? Let's see. Lucian's frightened. Warlock's really frightened. Yuli is not frightened, for some reason. Gallant rolled in that one. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> that, that, that tracks. Gallant's probably pissing himself under a fucking rock. <laughs> Gallant unhinged the door to the inn and is using it as cover. I don't remember if you said it's Clacky in this retinue? Clacky's here. Fuck yes. Okay, best episode. Fuck no, if Clacky dies, we are fucked. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Protect Clacky at all costs. There's a new success objective. Protect Clacky. Fuck Luciano. <laughs> Alright, so Dragon just roared. You guys are terrified, and Dragon's gonna play it cool for a minute here. Aw, oh, come on, Jimmy. Fine. You want a breath weapon? You got a breath weapon. I mean, I'm just saying. Andy wants everyone to die. <laughs> no, I don't. Yes. <laughs> we just had a table talk about pulling punches, that's all. <laughs> Is there a leave Luciano alive thing going on in the back of this dragon's mind? You can make an insight check. Yeah, I will, actually. Fuck yeah. Cool. Insight. It's a 21. Okay. On a 21, he referred to Luciano as the one who defies death. Mm -hmm. On that good of a roll, I think it's not clear that Luciano can die to this dragon. So, dragon's going to come at you, Alfonso, since you just held up Luciano and said... Here he is. Intelligence-based character yet again. That was a very smart thing for me to do. Here's the thing you want. And you just improved your wisdom score. You have no excuses. Okay. I have 20 fucking intelligence. Unbelievable. <laughs> he would as a seven. <laughs> That's awesome. We different. Just hyper, hyper intelligent character. Yeah. And just the rock dumb. And a smart person playing a dumb character and a dumb person playing a smart character. <laughs> good. All right. So the dragon's going to swoop down at you, Alfonso, and mm. come in to bite you. That's a 24 to hit. <laughs> Let me check. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bite attack. You don't even need to roll. It always hits Alfonso. <laughs> Beacon claw. A lot of this is always going to hit Alfonso. Probably. Oh, he's so little. <laughs> he's such a little guy. Same bite as he would type. No. <laughs> Okay, I've got the numpad ready for my new hit point total. It's going to be 17 piercing damage and 4 acid damage. 
As this acid hits you, you feel this burning sensation under your skin with this bite that draws blood. And it's going to swoop back up a little bit and try to use its claws to shake hematite off. It's pretty close to the ground right now, though. That's a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah. It hits. Can I do an athletic saving check? <laughs> no. Not against an attack. You're getting hit by this attack. We'll decide what happens after. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> You're going to take 16 slashing damage, and please make a con save. A con save. Wow. The DC to stay on this dragon is what the dragon rolled for the attack. Okay. So 20. It's a 15. Yeah, you're going to fall off and take only another 5 bludgeoning damage as you hit the ground and land prone. Good for hematite, I guess. <laughs> Should some of this damage be halved because of rage? Yeah, all of it, right? It's all physical. Okay, cool. Thank you, Scala. <laughs> How would the five be halved? Round it down. Lower. So it's actually only ten? Wow. Yep. <laughs> Hematite's barely ruffled. Dragon's still got one more claw attack, Fuck. and it's still in the area around Alfonso, so it's coming at Alfonso. It's actually coming at Luciano, but you're going to take this damage if it hits, and it will with a 28 to hit. Turns out it hits, yeah. Yeah, I bet it does, and that is going to be 12 slash dragon aims right for your arm. Cool. Alfonso, not to be a pain, but have you been rolling concentration for Hunter's Mark? I was hit twice. twice. Natural 20 on the first. Ooh. And 17 on the second. Nice. But no to answer your question. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah. Concentration is so easy to forget. Oh, yeah. We've all I even wrote this here. Remember, Alfonso needs to be rolling concentration check. The rest of its movement, it's going to just go up 20 feet. So it's 20 feet above the ground. Are you allowed to attack it as a reaction right now, being frightened of it? It doesn't say you can't take reactions. Although, the thing is, I don't think you can take attacks of opportunity with a ranged weapon. Hematite could attack it, though. Hematite landed right next to Alfonso. So, Hematite, you can take an attack of opportunity here. Oh, I am definitely going to do that. You said I landed prone, though. Is there anything with that? Creature has disadvantage on attack rolls. Yeah, so even though you're not frightened. Well, I have advantage with attack rolls, so I I would be canceled out, right? It does cancel out. You're right. Flat roll, 1d20, recklessly attacking this dragon as it leaves your space. That's a dirty 20. Nice! Dirty 20 hits. Yeah. So it's 8. 8 damage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the dragon doesn't react to that. Whatever. I'll get him eventually. Okay. As the dragon goes by, he would take just reaches out and claws his stupid scales. Nothing happens. Yeah, a couple of scales actually break off. It's brittle, almost like a slate. Jimmy, if they come off, I am taking them. I am putting them in my pocket. Can I do that? It's little pieces, little bits of dragon scale. It's not a full scale. Sweet. That's fine. Yeah, you can do that as free object interaction. That's fine. Warden's turn. Okay, so this dragon is 20 feet directly above us? Yes, directly above. And so it's pretty close to this building right now, which is taller than 20 feet. Not by much, but it is. Okay, I look down at Alfonso. He is after Luciano. You, my dear friend, must protect yourself. We will defend you. And, Jeppy, how much damage did you just take? Not quite halved, but almost half of my HP gone in a single turn. Okay. Then I look back up at this dragon, and I am going to draw my greatsword. I look around. I want to try and see if I can run or climb up any of the ruined in to attack this dragon in melee. Definitely. And this is actually not that hard of a DC as pieces of this inn are rotted and broken mm-hmm. away. So roll a pretty easy DC athletics check. Okay. Athletics. Very good. That is a 19. That is more than you need to climb up to this area that is collapsed in. And so you can stand up on top of it. You're probably 20 feet off the ground at eye level with the dragon. It's swooping around. It's not perfectly still hovering in this spot. It's within melee range of you if you can swipe out and hit it. Okay, very cool. So I am going to point my greatsword at it. And I am going to shout out to this dragon, Indraconic. What is your name, great dragon? We mean you no harm, but you will not take this, no. Fuck you. I am Alterantrax, and you will not stand in my way. 
like that. Okay, I'm gonna attack him. First attack. I am gonna re-roll with my motive potential because that's probably gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That's a natural 18 plus 7. Yes, that hits. And I am going to use a Divine Smite. Okay, I'm going to re-roll one of these ones. Great. So that is 14 slashing damage and 9 radiant damage. As you see the familiar dull glow of the runes on my greatsword, I am going to swing out again with extra attack. Uh, that is only a 17 to hit. 17 does not hit. Oof. I swing out, it doesn't quite reach, and as a bonus action, I'm going to quicken a chromatic orb. This is going to be lightning damage, and I roll uh, 21. 21 hits. Sorry, I'm going to be an asshole about this. Yeah, go ahead. Chromatic orb is a ranged spell attack, and you're in melee, so it would be with disadvantage if you wanted to do that. Yeah, that's true. That's on me. I should remember that. Shoot out a chromatic orb, I get a 9 total. Nine misses, but after you did land one hit on this dragon, it locks eyes with you. I smell a blue dragon. Who put you here? What do you know? Uh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Andy's face was covered by his pop screen, so I just know Andy enough to know that he had a facial <laughs> reaction, but didn't actually see it. <laughs> I lower my sword after making this defense. We met with a group of scholars who study the great ring of Sybaris. Oh, dragon, their leader was a sphinx named Flame Wind. We mean no ill of the dragons or the prophecies they harbor. Mm. Meddling with the timeline. Uh-oh. Dragon's going to use a wing attack as a legendary action. No. Oh. Please roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, great. Oh, perfect Uh-oh. for warden. <laughs> Dex save. That is a nine. <laughs> that fails. We know. Yeah. <laughs> this dragon on its swooping around motion extends its wings violently, sweeping you back and off your feet. You are now prone and you take 13 bludgeoning damage. Cool. I maintain concentration on shield of faith. And the dragon is going to fly up higher as part of that action. The dragon's about 60 feet off the ground. And that is Clacky. Okay. Come on, yep. Clacky. Yep, here we go. Dragon's going down. One shot. Clacky's going to, without any visible emotion or thought, run directly into the trees. God damn it, Clacky. I never <laughs> liked that mantis. No, no. No, no, no. We need him to live. That is fine. <laughs> That was awesome. And just like all the buildup from you guys. And then leaves. <laughs> yeah, no emotion. So we can't tell if Clacky was like, this is boring. I'm out or scared. Clacky just left. <laughs> all right. So that happens. Rizian, Yuli, and Orlot are going to, just as Gallant did, run into the inn seeking some hiding place. Wow, everyone's not rolling very well on their hide checks here. Your friends fucking suck. They aren't our friends. <laughs> no, they're not our friends. <laughs> but they do suck. We spent most of the campaign making sure they were not our friends. <laughs> <laughs> Did Hematite say that in character? Your friends fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> they're not amici of ours. Like what he said. Clearly. Fucking losers. However, Signori cracking running into the forest is a bit heartbreaking, if I may say so myself. <laughs> Similarly, Croswell and the other two scholars are going to run inside as well. And there is a better check. Are they also re-rolling fear checks? Oh, that's a good point. Wow, I just rolled three sixes in a row on a d20. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they all ran inside. It's fun. Okay. Well, this is probably going to be somewhat suboptimal, but I'm not going to have a better chance to do it. Istvan takes a piece of scrap metal out of their pouch throws it on the ground, raises up temper. Gift of the flame and Anatar's forge. This dragon seeks the soul of a friend. I will not let him claim it. And I slam my hammer down into the metal and it becomes molten hot and it shoots up into the air and on top of the dragon, it materializes into this conjured fire element. Fuck yeah. Holy wow. shit. I do roll this crafting check with disadvantage. Oh man. Because I'm a little scared. 
Oh man, I rolled a nat 20 too, but oh. I also rolled a four, so this fire elemental only has 10 hit points. Oh no! Oh. Oh. But it does come into being, it does land on top of this dragon, and just by being in the same area as the dragon, it deals nine fire damage, and the dragon is on fire. Nice. Holy shit. And it's going to make some attacks. Yeah, we know a 14 misses, and we know an unnatural 20 hits. Yes. Okay, so one hit. I see this elemental appear, and I flash back across space and time to Glizix. <laughs> <laughs> Very low damage on that. Only six more fire damage. Dagron is on fire. And then, is how far away from the tree line am I? 30 feet. Okay, yeah. Isfun's gonna use their movement to get into the trees. I don't want to hide with all of those expedition folks, but I will try and find some cover in the trees. And you got cover. You got half cover. And then the last thing I will do is attempt to save against this fear effect. Roll the five. That's not gonna do it. Ugh. Oof. Carry on. <laughs> okay. And this dragon's on fire now. Nice. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> I do what I can. <laughs> it's great. All right, top of the order. You see or hear nothing from Gallant, unless you're looking for him for some reason. Hematite. So Hematite notices that Isfahn took cover, and Hematite is next to Alfonso, right? Can I pick Alfonso up and throw him to Isfahn? Why? Because we're out in the open, and the dragon's coming at him, and over there is safer. That feels like something that Hematite would think. Oh, man. You can do that. <laughs> you picked up a whole giant boar above your head. You can pick up Alfonso. He's the same size as you. Yeah, he's a little guy like me. I can throw him. I guess the question is, is that what Alfonso wants? Yeah, you're right. You're right. This is a good space for some communication. He would take, would look to Alfonso. Hey, you want me to toss you over there? <laughs> And I'm, like, gesturing to his mom. <laughs> Warden's relatively close, right? 20 feet above you guys, yeah. Well, Signore Hematite, I think your idea is an inspired one. However, our other friend Warden is nearby and has healing and shielding capabilities. I think it is much better if we stay here. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so where's the dragon? Like, up? <laughs> the dragon's 60 feet above you. <laughs> just says that as the dragon's directly above us. Cool, cool, cool. So where's the dragon? <laughs> cool. <laughs> He's 60 feet above us. Hematite would run up the building. He would try to get closer to the dragon. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to climb up the building. Make an athletics or acrobatics check. It's going to be athletics. Because that's a 21. Yeah, so 21, you can climb up this building. Take your claws in and just go up. This building's about 40 feet tall. You can just climb up as high as you want on this building. Gonna do it. Gonna get as close to that dragon as possible. He just skitters up the side of this dilapidated building. It's got pieces of lumber falling off, and he's going upside down and climbing. He just goes the most direct path up, regardless of what it is. Passing right by Warden. <laughs> yes. Zoomies right beyond Warden. <laughs> yeah, zoomies right up. His ears are flat back. His eyes are huge. So how close to the dragon? Circling around. Still about 20 feet above you. Okay, then I'm going to try throwing a javelin at him. Because okay. why not? A little hematite-sized javelin. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, so it's 23. 23 hits. It's a 1d6 plus 4. Aw, oh, man, it's 5. Nothing. I'm just going to do it again. It's a 26. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's a 9. 9 piercing damage. Okay. This dragon's actually starting to look a little beat up. Not at all bloodied, but it's in a fight now. Damn straight, it's in a fight. I'm gonna growl at him. Growl! <laughs> what? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, fuck you, man! <laughs> Foolish beast. Is that your turn, Hematite? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's Alfonso. All right, yeah, I guess I'll take this attack with disadvantage. No. I'll try again on my other attack. Okay. Both the die rolls were 19s, so presumably 27 hits. Yeah, yeah. it does. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> and that is 15 lightning damage. Okay, wow. So one bolt of lightning flies past it, the other connecting, conducting through its wings, arcing from leg to leg. 
You may try to scare me, Signori Dragon, whatever your weird name is, but my spirit is indomitable, my friend. The dragon roars loudly. So with my flash of genius applied, it's a 16 to my save. 16. Just barely beats this DC. Wow. All right. Alfonso saves. Wow. You steal your resolve. Enjoy, Scala. <laughs> Enjoy that DC. I mean, I have a 40-some percent chance of hitting it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. That's the end of Alfonso's turn. We're going on to the dragon. Dragon's on fire. How much fire damage does it take? Oh, yeah. Nice. 10 fire damage. Oh. Something about Scala characters and just doing fire damage over time. That's usually antithetical to how I play, but, you know. Yeah, run into Link. Oh my god, I love Link so much. Aww, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so ten fire damage is this on-fire dragon is flying around. There's bits of scales flaking off like paper and falling down through the sky. Oh, that's cool. And Dragon's actually going to use its action to put the fire out. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah, no attacks this turn. And because it used its action for that, it's going to back out of javelin range. It's going to move about 30 feet horizontally away from the type. Does the elemental need to make any sort of check to stay on the dragon while it's moving? I don't think there really is a way to do that without expanding an action. It just had to use its action to fire out. Okay. Nice of you. I think all of us want to get a little hurt. I don't actually want to get hurt any more than I have, but I think everyone else wouldn't mind a little <laughs> bit of it. This is you. I'm in emotional pain. <laughs> oh yeah, you're afraid. Even Tai wants to crush people without getting hurt. He doesn't like it. Getting hurt sucks. You know what's fun? Making other guys hurt. And lose cards. Yeah, you know, hey man, you just gotta keep trying. You just gotta keep going. Practice makes perfect. Get it? Oh my god. spends his turn telling the dragon, you don't play cards? You've been making that joke now for three episodes, and this is the first <laughs> time I've gotten it. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the one who made wow. like six wow. puns in the first Hematite episode. And you both undercut the cataclysm line from the last episode. <laughs> it's my favorite. That was my favorite. Anyway, I guess that's the dragon's turn because it only gets one attack. So that is gonna be that. We move on to Warden. Okay, how far away is this thing for me now? 40 feet up, 30 feet over. Oh shit, chromatic orb is 90 feet. So I am going to use my action to cast Chromatic Orb. I get a 19 to hit. 19 is the AC. Nice. Very cool. Okay, this is going to be lightning damage. That is 16 lightning damage. Okay, nice. And then for the rest of my turn, I'm going to climb down to Alfonso. Okay. So that I'm next to Alfonso. That's just movement. Yep. Be brave, friend. We are not going anywhere. And I am going to quicken a second level cure wounds. That is both of my wounds. Alfonso, you heal for 14. Grazie mille, amici warden. We are going nowhere. We are doing this together. And I'm going to try and stand in front of Alfonso, my massive form, giving him some cover, and I stand my ground, and that's my turn. Times like these, I wish catapult could be used for things that are roughly warden-sized. Anyway. <laughs> A whole different category of spell. Warden, totally five pounds over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally five pounds. Warden, sucking your stomach. Let us do this. <laughs> I will. Oh, Warden is the sweetest mountain ever. Intelligence-based character thinks that sucking in your stomach makes you lighter. <laughs> Think that something made of rock can suck in its stomach. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Although work is not entirely made of rock. There are natural elements all over it. True. All right. No sign of clacky. <laughs> Dwarves and the gnomes are still hiding. Fucking pinchy more reliable than these people. Jesus Christ. On your passive perception, you can see them moving around inside. Okay, stronzo. <laughs> Before Istvan's turn, Dragon, as a legendary action, is going to wing attack this elemental. So that's a dex save? The dex save. Okay. That one! Ooh. Bye bye, Elemental. Oh no! Not an easy save anyway. So, you take eight bludgeoning damage. So, four. Half to four. And it can't be prone, right? It is immune to the prone condition. Okay, it's still hanging in there. Yeah, that was for the wing attack. So, now this is one more dex save uh, with the same DC to hang on. Makes sense. And not be knocked off. 
Okay, that's an 18. 18 just barely does not do it. Oh, no! Bummer! By one. Yeah. (laughs) His elemental falls off and falls 60 feet. And it doesn't have flying speed, so... It does take falling damage. It's gone. So that's going to (laughs) be... 66. Unless roll all ones. Unless you know, Jimmy rolls really poorly. Well, that, that is really poorly, but it might still do it here. So you take half of 15. Just enough. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Wait, why was it taking half? It has resistance to physical damage. Oh, right, right, right. Cool. So this fireball plummets off this dragon's back and flutters into cinder on the ground. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> Signori Fireball, no! <laughs> Did pretty good, though. Effective yeah. use of that. I'll never forget you, Fireball guy. Okay, now it's Istvan's turn. Okay, I'm going to bonus action, new class feature, summon my fighting spirit of the samurai, and draw my hammers, uh-huh. and I just do a focused breath and strike a balanced pose and I gain five temporary hit points and advantage on attack rolls until the end of this turn. Super sane. And I'm going to ready an action to attack this dragon if it comes within range of my hammers. I will, at the end of my turn, now make this wisdom save. 13 doesn't do it, right? 13 does not do it. Okay. Okay. You're putting on a good face, but you're still scared. Yep. This is a scary situation. Indeed. All right. Top of the order once more. Gallant fucking makes a scared yelp from inside. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, holy shit. Now, Andy, you need to sample that as a MIDI <laughs> instrument. <laughs> oh, my God, please. <laughs> in the combat music for this. <laughs> <laughs> Layered in his percussion. Oh my god. Hematite, you're on the roof. What are you doing? Oh, I'm on the roof. How far away is the dragon? 20 feet up, 30 feet over. Okay, here's what I want to do. I know I didn't take my special jump, but I could still jump. So maybe I could jump to a tree and from the tree, jump onto the dragon again. Roll nature, survival, or perception to see if there's a branch that extends out in this direction enough for you to get over to the trees without jumping. All right, we're going to go with perception. Okay. Ooh, boy. It's a seven. Do I even know what trees are? That looks like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm on a tree, right? Yeah, right. House is tree. House is tree. It's made of wood. A trace of the true self exists in the false self. All right, forget that then. I have two more javelins. I'm going to throw them. What's the range on javelin? 30, 120. This is with disadvantage. That's a 14 for one, which doesn't hit. And a 13 for the other one. Hematite just fucking throws his last two javelin straight at the dragon. He thinks he's going to hit it. He's ready to get a win. And it just sails underneath him. Next time you're on the ground... You can use movement and object interaction to go find those if you want them back. Oh, yeah. The other two are stuck in the dragon. He just freezes, staring at it, and shakes in anger. Hematite, your fur's standing up. Small, vibrating, raging cat. I could just fucking touch him. (laughs) All right, Alfonso. Key. Just a quick location check. How far away is the dragon? Within 90, for sure. These are not with disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, just attack. That's what we're doing. Natural 20. Nice. Nice! Nat 20. Nat 20. Does that also double the Hunter's Mark damage? Yes. yes. Oh my. So you're rolling 66 here? That is 29 lightning damage. Nice. Oh, man. It looks like the dragon really felt this, this massive lightning bolt. It hits it in the sky. I grab my Luciano arm. You will not take us so easily, especially when we band together and launch this arm at the dragon. Feels good. We're doing that again. It is a 19 total. 19 is the AC. That hits. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was going to be 19 or 20. I knew it would be one of them. Okay. 16 lightning damage on not too shabby either. Yeah. This is Alfonso's fucking combat. Yeah. Let me say. <laughs> Pulling Andy numbers on this shit right now. Feels good, I gotta say. Maybe I'll become a power player after all. I know. He would say it was kind of a blunder on that first round. God. Yeah. <laughs> if I could only yeah, unleash the full force of Hematite. <laughs> Had to be a flying dragon. Tell me about it. This dragon looks incredibly hurt, yeah. and its body language is starting to look desperate to you. Fuck. That's Alfonso's turn, and we're going on to the dragon. No. <laughs> Audible gulp. 
again. You should be audible gulping. No. Well, enjoy the peaceful time in the forest, Istvan. You have all had a couple rounds now to spread out. Yeah. I wanted to be near Warden. I'm standing in front of Alfonso. Cards on the table. This dragon's in single digits. You're getting a fucking breath weapon this turn. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Checks out. I don't know how acid breath would work with all the gnomes and shit in half cover, but... You get the sense that this structure is solid enough that they are not in immediate danger right now. However, this dragon is going to fly down so that it's 60 feet directly above you, Warden, and Alfonso. Not within 60 feet of Isfahan. I know. Mm. And it is going to let forth a big plume of black gray mist. And you both need to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, I totally thought that this was going to be con save. That's brutal. Oh! Did you crit it? But the net no. 20 from Warden <laughs> for a 19. Okay. So I could use my reaction for another flash of genius, but I don't think that's going to matter on a natural one. No! Oh, wow. No! So Alfonso. Oh no. Is that number real? 12d8 acid damage coming at you, and Warden's going to take half of this. Fuck. Okay. Fuck. Uh oh. I don't like this. I really am worried that my character is getting TKO'd. There's a reason I got close to Alfonso. There's also a reason you told him to protect himself. <laughs> didn't even try to hide. <laughs> no, he didn't, did he? <laughs> don't face character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that should just be your battle cry from now on, Jeffy. <laughs> Yeah. Intelligent, eh? Molto. That's almost exactly average. Alfonso takes 55 points of acid damage. Gone, gone, on the ground. And Warden, that's 27. It is not enough to TKO me, though. I am just knocked unconscious, thank God. I fail my concentration challenge. Uh... <laughs> it's fine. I rolled a four. Yeah. So this gray black plume comes out of this dragon's mouth rains down on you like acid rain and these little droplets are hitting you it's landing on your armor and sizzling in certain places the grass around you is dying warden it's hitting your stone you have little pock marks in the spots where it's hitting especially on your shoulders and anything green is being a little bit discolored here yeah as this pain takes over me and i collapse to the ground signori finish this for us please grazie mille for everything yeah you fall unconscious it will be all right you see little X's over the eyes of Alphonse. Oh, no. Anime style. <laughs> <laughs> when you fall unconscious, Luciano's going to roll into the order. Oh, cool. cool. That's not too good, though. This dragon looks really visibly injured, especially from this lightning and the fire that have burnt off parts of it. Its wings are more tattered than before, and it's going to use all its movement to fly straight up. It's 140 feet now. Holy shit. That's the dragon's turn. We're on to Warden. It is 140 feet above me? Yes, directly above, circling. Okay. I look down at Alfonso, having just said it's going to be okay. Liar! (laughs) I have these acid marks all over my stone form, but steeled with resolve. I'm looking okay health-wise. I look back up. I take my sword in both hands, and you begin to see all of the runes on the sword, my arms, my entire body, and even my wisp begin glowing a brilliant emerald green as I point it directly up. By the ancients, I will defend these souls. And I am going to cast Wrath of Nature. My once-a-day gift from the ancients. 120-foot range, a 60-foot cube. Okay, yes. All of the trees and vines around the dragon become animated, glowing the same color as all of my features. I end my turn, and the dragon needs to make a dex save. Fuck. Let's see. Yes. It passes because of legendary resistance. No. Oh my god, and none of these are half on saves. Are you kidding me? Oh, damn it. 
what a roller coaster of emotions that it's been. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's maybe the coolest flavor any of our characters have ever done in a combat. And it was so heroic. And then it was <laughs> noped. Immediately. In a hard way. Ugh. That's the game. Rest in peace, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. sucks. That's all of the pain Wink felt across all of Icewind Dale in one action. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can do. It is way too far away for me to do anything else. Lay on hands is an action. I'm out of quickenings. Okay. So that's the end of your turn. All the others still seem to be hiding. Dragon's far away. It's Istvan. Okay. Here's a question. Would moving to where Alfonso is be moving closer to the dragon? Yes. So here's what I'm going to do. Don't pull a clacky. No, I'm not going to pull a clacky. <laughs> no, I know, I know. <laughs> With disdain, they say that. Amazing. <laughs> How far the mighty have fallen, Clacky. <laughs> How far away from Hematite am I? 40 feet down, 30 feet over. We have these healing potions that we found in the giant ruins. I can't get over to Alfonso. How difficult would it be for me to toss a healing potion to Hematite from this distance? <laughs> to Hematite? You would also toss it to me. I'm a lot closer. Yeah. Yeah, but I think... Hematite oh, Hematite about before that. the dragon. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> if the throw is hard. Yeah, with disadvantage, you can roll, I'd say, athletics or acrobatics <laughs> to throw that item. Yeah. Cool. And then Hematite <laughs> is the catcher. This is the most useful thing I can do at the moment. I'm going to give it a try. My options are limited, so Hematite. Yeah. This can help Alfonso catch. Okay. It's a 13 acrobatics check to toss it. Okay, give me tight roll acrobatics to catch it. Oh, come on! I'm sorry. There's nothing strength-based about catching a throw. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, it's a dirty 20. Yeah, you definitely do catch it. I can never tell what Alexa's rolls are going to be, because her reaction is positive, but they're bad as well. It's great. <laughs> Luciano has disconnected visibly from Alfonso and his handy turn. Oh, I forgot about that. Or you can stick with what you're doing here. I think Isfan would have stuck to throwing it to Hematite just because they don't know how reliable Luciano's magic is. A flesh and blood creature they can trust. I do what I do. Ooh. Oh, thanks. Whoa. Wow. Oh, jeez, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now we know how Isfan really feels. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. Scala is a bit robophobic. Really? Yeah, AIs and robots. Well, I know what we're talking about on this table <laughs> talk. Right. Oh yeah, this is packed. <laughs> After everything you learned over the past ten sessions about the nature of humanity. Okay. So, Hematite, you catch this potion. Yeah. That was thrown to you. It is not your turn, but uh, you catch it. Okay. I alley up this potion to Hematite, <laughs> and I remain where I am, cowering. I guess I'm just going to be mixed not appearing in this combat. Here's my wisdom save. Still a no. That's a 10. No. Damn. Oh, right. You can't mm -hmm. really move close. I forgot about yeah. the reason yeah, you couldn't. that's the whole reason. I thought you were trying to protect yourself from damage, but yeah, you can't because of the fear. No, that's the whole reason. Oh, my God. Yikes. That happens to be where Luciano is in the order. So, Luciano detaches from Alfonso. Fratelli. Alfonso, you hear this in your half-dream state. Fratelli, get up. Alfonso. Alfonso. He's tugging on you with his hand. Nothing happens. This is like the Mufasa <laughs> scene in The Lion King. Warden looks down to see this, sullen. It will be all right. Luciano's not going to do anything on his turn. Oh, I was really expecting there to be a 160-foot range uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> now, Luciano has the stats of the arcane propulsion arm. Bummer. Which is 20 feet, right? Yeah. All right. Nothing from Gallant. That's Hematite. Cool. Hematite is gonna do his little skitter climbing right back down and go to Alfonso and and take out the little potion and gently put it into his mouth. Hey, bud, this is from Istvan. Wake up. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> like, <laughs> shakes him a little bit. Hematite, go ahead and roll 2d4. Plus two. Okay, so that's a four and another four. Nice! Wow! Max! Max roll. Wow. Okay. Jesus. Ten points of healing, Alfonso. A plus bedside manner for Hematite <laughs> over here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Alf Alfonso slowly gets up. Cool. And looks to Hematite. You are a very reliable feline friend, I must say. <laughs> and then we'll look down and say, Luciano, I am not out of this fight quite yet. 
Aww. <laughs> oh, I knew it was not your time. You've proven that death is eh, optional. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Neither would this dragon. That is Alfonso's turn. Wait, wasn't it my turn? Right, Hematite, you have more turn. Yeah. Can I sight where my javelins are so that... Oh, yeah. This will be an easy DC perception check. Oh, okay, cool. 17? 17, you can find them for sure. You can definitely see them, and you can go and get those on your next turn. All right, then I'll wait. However, your rage ends because you end your turn without having attacked or taken damage. That checks out. And it's worth it. Yeah. I think it is worth it. Now it's Alfonso. Alfonso's still bloody and gritted teeth will just look up at this dragon, calculate the distance. It is very literally a long shot, my brother, but you can do it. Even you, Alfonso. I'm going to go for it with disadvantage. The first attack is deeply a no. Okay, Luciano flies straight up, doesn't reach, and comes back <laughs> down. In a big way. It was in that one. Ooh. All right. Try again. A simple calibration error, Fratelli. This one is for you. Ah, of course. It's a 19 on the first roll. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, God. It's a 17 on the second, which I know doesn't hit. So close. Did a little bink on the claw, just like another character we know from a different campaign. (laughs) Luciano comes back down. I'm sorry, brother. I couldn't reach. I'll try again next time. It is okay. We have him in our sights. It's my turn. You should hide. (laughs) <laughs> Thank oh you. Oh my god. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, I, I know like intelligence based character and it's funny, but like it is not in Alfonso's nature to fucking run. Alfonso, maybe we should find somewhere safe. <laughs> Piacere. For your brother's sake, Alfonso, take cover. Per favore. Please. I am being stubborn. I see this now. I'm going to go and run into cover <laughs> with Istvan, not with the dipshits in the end, though. Okay. I guess I'll try and hide in the brush. <laughs> no. No? You already used your action. Fuck. That's right. You're not a rogue. Not a rogue. You do have half cover. Very smart of me to do that. <laughs> end of my turn. Independently, without any assistance. Yeah, now you just put Istvan in danger. Oh, yeah. Well, Istvan hasn't been hit. Istvan's fine to be in danger. You're right. Yeah, Istvan's Istvan has fine. not been Istvan's hit. Fine. Yeah, Istvan can take it. Let's spread this. Jimmy's about to say the dragon's breath weapon comes back. No, I didn't roll it yet. <laughs> it did it. Oh, it's a six no. on the D6. Dragon circling directly overhead. Audible gulp, part three. <laughs> do we see it charging up? What it's going to do is, from this circle motion, turn down and just dive bomb towards you 80 feet until it's about 60 feet above you. I should have gone in the fucking inn, because then at least we would have killed all these dipshit characters in the front of us. I mean, that is exactly how I thought this would go. This is different. Kind of what I wished I did, but I still think Alfonso is a person that sticks with his people. I gotcha. My reaction was to do what Alfonso would do. Okay, Warden, roll religion. Oh, the fuck? Well, I wonder what this nat 20 does. Nat 20. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Plus what? Nat 20 plus four. Okay. You learn the spelling of the dragon's name. <laughs> <laughs> You see as this dragon comes down and looks to be readying its breath weapon once more as this dark cloud condenses around it, past it, up in the sky, in these shimmering shards of morning. You see the form of this dragon is wreathed by the constellation of Falajor, who you glimpsed last episode. Mm, yeah. And on the Nat 20, you can see that Falajor is looking straight down here at this spot at this time, mm. and Pronepsis looks over its shoulder. That's what you get in that. Wow. Mm. Warden is stunned at this sight. Breath weapon. Here it goes. Istvan and Alfonso, please roll a dexterity saving throw. You can add two because of the cover. Okay. That is gonna be a 20. Unnatural. I need this to pass, so we do whatever we can. That is also an unnatural 20 after Flash of Genius is applied and the plus two. Nice. It's probably not going to (laughs) save Alfonso, but that's nice anyways. So as this dragon shoots this dark gray mist of acid rain at 
these trees here, you can see the bark and the leaves and vines dissolving like paper as the droplets pelt it. And even though you try to find cover, you try to cover yourselves quickly, it does come down and touch you and it burns on contact doing half of 62 acid damage. Yikes. <laughs> it's funny, you're ready to loot from the dead and take a potion off my fucking corpse and give it to me. <laughs> I don't know. No, I'll burn the turn. Just kill the dragon. We'll see what Warden does. Maybe Warden can do something. <laughs> Is Luciano going to detach again, Jimmy? Yes, Luciano has detached from Alfonso when you're unconscious and can move. Okay, so that's the dragon's turn. Used all its movement, used its breath weapon. That is Warden's turn. Okay, it flew 80 feet down from where it was? Yes. So it is now out of the 60-foot cube that I put it in? Yes. 60 feet below that. Bummer. Okay. I'm still holding concentration on this Wrath of Nature, so I'm still glowing with this emerald green as I look at the dragon. Great dragons above are watching us, but I stand by the power of Chronepsis, and even the great Valajor cannot stand against his power. And I'm going to try and hit it with a chromatic orb. Okay. Send us home. That is a natural one. Oh, Ooh. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no. Are you okay. fucking kidding me? I meant send it home, not <laughs> us. Sorry, so shit. Stupid. Uh, what the hell is going on? Both of my fucking turns have been just... <laughs> Team, this is it. The Jimmy Dice have come yes. alive in this combat. The curse of the Jimmy Dice. Tempted fate enough. Oh my god. Oh my god. Maybe Flame Wind was telling us stop making fun of Jimmy Dice, else terror befalls you. We just couldn't figure out the riddle. Fuck. I've got nothing else. I can't quicken anything. None of my bonus actions do any damage. And it's way too far to do a kinetic dash. That is Warden's turn. Clacky comes out and just ships it and dies. <laughs> no. <laughs> sure would be great if some of those dumb assholes that are hiding would help us. No, they're dumb assholes. Yeah, no. They're dumb assholes, and they're not very good fighters. I don't know what you guys were so afraid of. <laughs> not killing them. That's what we were afraid of. No, no, I thought they would be good fighters. I'm putting my cards on <laughs> the table. Again, intelligence-based character. I'm very good at this kind of thing. That's another topic for table talk, but I think canonically, Istvan was supposed to be the best fighter out of the group. Yeah, that's why they were hired. But Istvan very much didn't want to kill them, so... Right. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> not killing them. Istvan. Istvan is standing over poor unconscious Alfonso. Blacksmith's apron dripping with acid. They are once again going to summon their fighting spirit as a bonus action to give themselves advantage on all attack rolls. Nice. Canceling out the disadvantage. So I'm just going to make these flat as I throw my hammers at the Dagron. Come on, you can do it. You got this. You have like six attacks. Ah, day. I did not think I would be so terrified to see you. Let us see if I have fended you off for a purpose or a name. First two attacks. Three and a five on the dice. Oh my god! Fuck. I'm going to action search. Quick, before you say what happens here. <laughs> Warden, on your 24 religion check from earlier, you see up in the stars here, among these bigger draconic spirits, you also see the smaller ones that are associated with what in Corvair they'd call the Sovereigns. And so you can see this spirit of Anatar mm. that is now rapidly approaching Falazur, which reigns over everything at this moment, while Chronepsis watches from afar. Whoa. Nice. I need a 12. I need one in four dice to be a 12 or higher. One of them was. The other was an 11, which is an 18, which we know doesn't hit. But I did roll maximum damage. 12 points bludgeoning. 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. Dragon's been at one HP for like two entire turns now. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Istvan, how did you, a smith from the Mrorholds, slay this great black dragon? Istvan, still terrified, almost out of panic, pulls every hammer off their belt and hurls it, missing with the first three, and then desperately clutching to their last hammer. They take one steadying breath, 
relax their arm, and fling it right into the dragon's jaw, toppling it out of the sky, crashing through the trees into the dirt of this clearing. Yes. And I guess I would see, as the dragon falls away from my view, the same image of Anatar in the stars that Warden would have seen. And I touch my face, and this morning, as I feel the peach fuzz growing in, I think I may not need my razor. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. That's Fuck. awesome. Oh my god. So good. Istvan, roll religion. Okay. 17. Yeah, you feel your inner flame burning more brightly, probably than you've ever felt it burn in your life. You felt it growing slowly over these past weeks, but this, you are back. Have we exited initiative? Alfonso is unconscious, so no. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah. So, Dragon's Dunzo. Dunzo Dragon. Luciano is in a panic. Luigi's Mansion vibes. <laughs> Alfonso! Alfonso, it's over! Get up! Get up, Alfonso! It's over. Oh, no! And Gallant is gonna peek his head out the window. Is it gone? <laughs> oh, fuck that dude. <laughs> oh, fucking Chad. They must have flown away. <laughs> it's this body. Literally enormous <laughs> yeah. corpse. Right there. <laughs> Huh. Looks like you took care of that. A team of tight's turn. Alfonso's unconscious about 30 feet away from you. Okay, where's the dragon in relation to me and Alfonso? The dragon fell pretty much straight down, so landed on the road, and so the dragon is actually between you and Alfonso and Isfahan. I'm gonna go check out the dragon. I want to make sure it's dead, first of all, and also take a scale or something see if there's any gold on it or like stuff okay yeah you can do that this dragon is definitely mortally wounded it's bleeding its body is still dying well that's yeah that fucking sucks (laughs) oh you're not familiar with jimmy dming death sequences (laughs) they're very tragic no fuck this dragon this dragon's a prick hematite doesn't know that Dragons are just dragons. They're like people, but they're lizards. <laughs> you know, like Hematite doesn't know. Can Hematite talk to it? Hematite would go over and realize that it's dying and put a paw on it. Hey, hello? You get no answer, but a guttural groan comes from its face as you move this body slightly. Oh, this fucking sucks. Like, what the hell, man? Come on. Hematite says that to the dragon. Like, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck, dude. Major party foul. (laughs) Major, major bad vibes, bro. (laughs) Really harsh the whole mood. That wasn't cool, man. That wasn't cool. What are you doing on your turn? My gut says kill the dragon. Like, finish the dragon off. But that seems also like a bad move. This dragon is in death saves. You'd be able to tell just from being near it. Okay. Hey, guys, I don't think it's dead. (laughs) Should I kill it? I'm unconscious. I'm not answering your question. Warden honestly doesn't know the answer to that. Mm, Neither do I. Do what you think is right. Can I make a vibe check with the dragon? You can do a vibe check. Give me an insight. The 12. Even on a 12, I think you'd realize that this dragon was acting out of desperation at the very end and was keeping its distance on purpose. I'm not giving any more on a 12. Okay. Hematite's instinct would be to show mercy to a dying creature and finish the cycle of life and death. So Hematite puts a paw on the dragon, takes out his longsword, and do I have to make an attack bonus to just kind of like end it? An incapacitated creature. Any attack is a critical hit. Okay. You could do that twice. Hematite would take out his long sword and with his paw on the dragon. I'm sorry, guy. You're gonna go be with your friends now. So, yeah. And then he put his sword into the dragon. Okay. Hematite puts an end to this dragon once and for all. That was sad. What a bummer. Seeing this, Warden just looks up to see what might happen in the sky above us. What might happen in the sky above you? Roll religion. But we're still in initiative, so... Oh, that's right, because Alfonso's still... Yeah, Dragon is not in initiative anymore. Yeah, Alfonso. Roll death save. That's probably what I'm going to do in my turn. Yep. Natural one. Oh, no. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's two auto fails. So you have one left? Shit. Let's hope a tree doesn't fall. Better get over here, Warden. Why aren't we out of initiative? The dragon's dead. 
No, this is why the initiative stays up for situations like this. Oh my god. Yeah, because people are still in death saves. Luciano begins to panic as he sees your condition worsen. Yeah, you see Alfonso's breathing is slower and slower. His respirations labored. Warden, he's fading. That's Warden's turn. Okay. I looked up as Hematite took their turn. I look back down as Isfan shouts out, how far away am I from the two of them? 30, but you have to go either over or around the dragon's body. That's fine. I will begin running towards the commotion, and then as a bonus action, I will boreal sweep towards Istvan and Alfonso. You see a silvery mist of ice as I dash to their side, and I am going to lay on hands on Alfonso for 10 hit points. <laughs> thank you. Also, Alfonso thank you for healing me. That's a double Alfonso's thank you. Is... <laughs> That's how you go. Alfonso, give us some uh, just came back from the brink of death flavor. Alfonso will get up, still looking horribly bloody. I am sorry I brought all of this upon you, but it appears as though we make a good team, but I am sorry. Okay, we exit initiative. We stand as allies, Alfonso. Make no mistake, but that teamwork may yet not be enough. For what comes next, I have no idea. As I look back up to the scene in the sky. You need not blame yourself, Alfonso. It is as Warden said. We stand with you. You two are no Luciano, Alfonso says, tearing up a little bit. But you are the best friends I have ever had. Warden, roll religion with advantage. Okay. 18. So on that 18, you've now lost the sight of Chronepsis. Mm. You can no longer see Chronepsis watching this scene play out. So just a little bit of background context here. Your understanding of the sovereigns is a bit different than the present day sovereigns. But you would still understand that these sovereigns aren't really different deities. They're representations of many different figures throughout time that echo through the timeline. In the tradition that you come from, these are thought to be dragons. Others have other opinions. In Corvair, some believe that they're dragons. Some think that there are living aspects of these sovereigns. But you do see within this large constellation group of Thalazur, the cluster of shards that represents Anatar. And you see two others with Anatar at this time. Mm. You can see the spirit of Kol Karan in full retreat. And you can see that Anatar is restraining the Keeper, also known as Kol Tarant. And if I'm not mistaken, those are Anatar's children, right? Anatar's two sons. Whoa. Do I know what any of that could possibly mean? On an 18 with advantage, I'm not going to give you more than I already did. That is some heady stuff that just happened. Gotcha. Then I will just point up. I fear that we have yet to incur the worst from Falishur. Great constellation of death. What low is Svan? Anatar is with us. They restrain their brood as we speak. Istvan, probably the first time you've ever seen them, smiles. My act of great valor is recognized. Not the felling of this dragon, but standing in the fence of a lonely soul against impossible odds. You have done great work, Amici Istvan. But what was it you said? You said... An act of great valor or a work of magnificent beauty. Perhaps you stay with us a bit. You help me bring back my brother. We make something beautiful. Perhaps, Alfonso. But this morning I have been considering the Sphinx's words. The inevitable can be prolonged, but not prevented. We could give Luciano back his life. But death comes for all beings in the end. Alfonso takes a moment, thinking pensively a serious look on his face, and then... Ah, then we agree, then. This would be very beautiful work to prolong this death for as long as possible. (laughs) If that is what you desire, then I am at your service. Perfecto. So, at this point, the members of the expedition are going to start making their way out of the ruin of the cat's eye. Gallant first, and then Croswell and his companions, and 
Rizzy and Yulian are a lot. Clacky comes out of the jungle. Well, the lot of you were no help at all. You should be moto ashamed of yourself. Gallant's gonna respond to that. What did you want us to do? I didn't expect you to fight the dragon. They are fortunate to still be breathing, Alfonso. As are you. That's right. Croswell's gonna make his way over to the dragon's body and start inspecting it. Oh, did I get my scales? I don't think you did. No. Okay, so before he comes over, I want to take at least four scales off of the dragon. Yeah, these are brittle. You can actually just pull these right off. They're almost like bits of thin slate in your paw. How many could I take off? As many as you want to take, I guess. This is an enormous dragon, and these chip off. Seven seems good. I'll take seven. (laughs) Okay, so yeah, you can chip away, and you can pull these off. This dragon has really large, deeper embedded scales, but then there's this surface level that chips away, and then you get these seven differently sized bits of scale. Could I get meat? Meat? No. Yeah. (laughs) You'd have to really cut into this thing to get meat. No, these are just scales. Two foot tall cat with claws big enough to cut into a fucking dragon. As we've established previously, these are not little kitty cat claws. That's fair. He's like fucking swords for fingers. That's right. Seriously, it's the D6 slashing (laughs) weapon. So I take the scales and then Chad Gallant is coming up to me. Chad Gallant (laughs) is standing around talking to the party. Professor Croswell is making his way over to the dragon. Okay, so when he comes near enough to me, Hematite would be like, Hey, who are you? Stalking Beast? Is this with you? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely with them. Who are you? Are you with them? Uh, My name is Professor Croswell. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. (laughs) (laughs) I lumber up behind Professor Croswell. This is our quite fearsome and strong clawed ally. Hematite. Hmm. Hematite stands up even straighter, like puffs out his chest a little bit. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) When you stand up straighter and puff your chest out, you're a little bit bigger than Croswell. Croswell is an elderly gnome. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. He doesn't care. You do the same thing. It's a pleasure to meet you, Hematite. Croswell is going to turn to the dragon and start inspecting it. Remarkable. Alfonso will hobble over to the scene at this point. Professor, what are you seeing in this? Hmm. Well, strange how we all converged on this place at the same time, isn't it? I will approach this gaggle. (laughs) Tell me, scholar, what do you know of the draconic prophecy? Ah, yes, the draconic prophecy. Very ancient, unknown to most. It would take several lifetimes to truly understand it. That's why most mortals don't even attempt it, really. Landlin, get the- that- that book- Yes, bring that here. He starts flipping through this cosmology book. It's mostly numbers and letters and arcane symbols and alchemical symbols and star maps and planetary vectors and things like that. Quite riveting. You see, this place at this time, to my calculation, was the nearest point of prophecy to our current location. Now, what significance this has is anyone's guess. It would take several lifetimes to figure that out. But here we all stand. My wisp flickers towards Alfonso. (laughs) Professore, what do you mean by point of prophecy? (laughs) You see, the draconic prophecy is endlessly complex. It ranges from enormous cataclysmic effects to even very small, minute details of everyday events. And so, using this calculation, I was able to just glimpse something that would happen here, in this place, At this time, not knowing, of course, what we were getting into, I see now it was incredibly dangerous, but led us straight back to you. Now, if this prophecy was to be brought about, say, because someone in this group, I do not know who, caused this dragon to arrive, would that be significant in any way? Asking for a friend. Hmm. (laughs) Well, as I've said, I can't speak to the reasons that any of these things happen, simply that they do, will, and have happened. Warden, you spoke to the dragon, I think. Did it say anything to you? We exchanged words, yes. Only as much as what you could assume, friend Istvan. It was here for the one who defies death. A cruel 
jest of fate, perhaps, Professor Croswell, that you only arrived just after we had met a great sphinx, one studying this very prophecy. Great sphinx? Here? In this place? I slowly, with my giant arm, point back towards the ruined structure. Inside there? Hmm. Perhaps another time, or another dimension, or something else I do not know, but that is where we came from. It does feel like only yesterday, though. That is also where Hematite came from. Yeah, Sphinx and I are, like, really good friends. (laughs) That place is usually different, but it'll be back to normal pretty soon, probably. I want to worry about it. Hey, (laughs) do you want to play cards? You like playing cards, dude? (laughs) I fucking knew it. it. The second you broke in the middle of a sentence, all these fuckers going to ask about cards. Does Hematite hold up his deck of cards? (laughs) <laughs> okay, so with my arm, I just slowly bring Hematite's arms down. <laughs> Perhaps another time. Tell me I am having a thought. Professor, what would you in that tome of yours make of these prophetic words? And then I would like to bring up some of the vagary that Flamewind told us. Okay. What in particular? Do you have anything written down? The first one I had written down was the present once, present again. I also have choose your path wisely for only one may be yours. And then the inevitable can be prolonged but not prevented. Also, Istvan would add to this. Is there anything regarding the dragon Orion? Because that was also mm. the dragon that we the met. Blue the blue dragon, dragon, right. Yeah. The aspect of, yeah. As you're gathering here, the expeditions make themselves a little more comfortable here. We can take a short rest while you're having this conversation. If Alfonso's still really hurt, I get a spell slot back so I can heal them if need be. You'd see Alfonso looking upright and relatively alert, but you could tell that Alfonso probably isn't up for another deep combat. If we get the sense something's coming, I wouldn't mind a heal. Okay. During the short rest, a hematite would go up to each of you. Hey, I got you one of these things here. And then he'd give each of you a black dragon scale. Grazie mille, signori hematite. This is very nice. Yeah. You can use that next time we play cards. Huh? I can lose it next time we play cards the way you play cards. That's right. I mean, no, dude, no. You got to think of it like, you know, you're just having fun. You just don't worry about losing it. I do not think I will wager this memento. I put it away. See? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isvan knows what's up. Dragon scales. Does it have any magical property? Like... Not readily apparent, but if you were to try to incorporate this into some work of smithing or artifice, something might manifest, but dragons are largely mysterious in this world. Nobody you know and nobody they know have ever encountered a dragon in real life. Mm -hmm. Hematite has. Well, Hematite has. Yeah, of course. I mean, Warden also has. Yep. You know, back in Corvair. Right. Anyway, you asked questions of Professor Croswell. Hmm. Strange riddles. You know, as I've alluded to, I I am no scholar of the prophecy. I really cannot make heads or tails of this. But, you know, there are some back at the university who may be able to help you with this. In addition to that, we also have an extensive library back at the university club in Stormreach. You're welcome to peruse the stacks when we get back to town. But I'm afraid I can't offer any elucidation. Fascinating. Then we should finish our journey. And return to Stormreach. Can I do a quick perception check to just see if anyone in the expedition is giving a glance to Warden, like they still want to start some shit? Or Insight, maybe, if I just get that vibe. Either or. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Istvan would also be looking out for such attitudes. That's a 21 Insight. Okay. It's Istvan's 21 Insight. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On that 21 Insight, Istvan, you see Rizian? is eyeing you sheepishly. Okay, let's do this. I walk up to Rizian. Hmm. 
Hello. Is there something you want to say to me? I suppose. An apology is in order. I felt so guilty. I thought I had condemned the two of you to death, marching you out in the jungle like that. I had no idea you wouldn't return. I did not expect you to say such a thing. Yes, well, for weeks now, I've laid awake at night, and it's haunted me, really. I've never seen a person separated from an expedition come back, and yet here you are. I understand your guilt, Rizian. I, too, have had those that I was responsible to protect lost, never to return. If there is one thing that I ask of you, I can give you no answer. But think upon what caused you to take those actions, what greed motivated you, and think how it embroils all of our homeland. There are many thousands of people like you who take these actions, not understanding the cost. Hmm. I hope now that you understand, perhaps you will gain some wisdom. Oh, Esteban, if only it were about greed, that would make all of this so much simpler. I owe a great deal of gold to House Kunderak, and I was hoping that this would be the big score that finally sets me free. I see. I don't know where you're from, Rizian. From the Muraholt, originally. Ah, well, then like me, you understand how important freedom is, having been deprived it so long. If there is some way that I can help you earn your freedom without appending the freedom of another sentient creature, I give a nod over to Warden, then I'll gladly help you. I appreciate you saying that, Ispan. I need you to know that had I known, had I understood that this was truly a sentient being, a person, I would not have pursued, for I know how fragile freedom can be. You see, I was born in the Marorholds, and I was drafted into the Carnathi army. You know that the Marorholds used to be, they teach you youngsters these things, yes? Aye. <laughs> we were captured by hobgoblin pirates, and I was sold into slavery. I managed to buy my own freedom, pulling some strings on House Kondorak credit. That was 22 years ago, and I'm still buried under the debt. So if there's anything you can do, I appreciate it, but for now I feel that my cause is hopeless. It's fun seeds. Shameful, isn't it? But the same sort of servitude the Karnathi forced us into, we now force upon our own kind. I don't know what I can do yet, but I will not forget you when we return to Corvair. Thank you. God damn it! Yeah. Fucking random Rizian redemption arc. Wow. When he said that's what makes this so much harder, I was like, are we about to get fucking like double, yeah. triple cross? Like that's right. where my mind was going. Been sitting on that for like three episodes. <laughs> you guys were evading that expedition. You sure you don't want to see the expedition again? <laughs> <laughs> no, fuck those clowns. We hate them. All right. So vibe check. Himante wants to know uh, first. What this dude, what his intentions are towards Isfahan and the group in general, and then to everybody else, like, vibe check. Are we friends with these guys or not? Are they cool? Are they not cool? Okay, yeah. Give me a vibe check. Insight. I was hoping for something low so that he could get into hijinks, but it's a 19. (laughs) Yeah, wow. On a 19, no threatening body language. In general, they seem very glad to see this party. Oh, all right. On a 19, which is out of character for hematite. Yes, it is. <laughs> you can gather that the expedition didn't know where Istvan and Alfonso were and assumed that they were dead. Oh, okay, cool. They were just lost in the cursed jungle, never to return. And now this is just a chance meeting here. All right, pretty cool. And then this dude talking really seriously with Istvan. I understood basically all of that. Is it true? Basically, he's like making amends with Isfahan, explaining some deep things. They're having a moment. That much you okay. can understand. But still, as Hematite, right. you don't understand debt or even money at all. Yeah, he needs things though, right? The way they explained it to me was <laughs> that there is a money commodity. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a interchangeable resource between the goods bought and the labor required to produce. Sure. Okay. So it's like, that's like all that shiny coins. It's coins, right? Yes. That is it. 
Okay, yeah, I got some of those. Hematite's gonna pull out a couple of brellish coins, and he's just gonna, like, walk over to... How tall is Rissian? Rissian is... Wow, he's four foot seven. Wow. Oh, tall guy. He's still a little stocky because he's a dwarf, but he's kind of also emaciated. Oh, yeah, okay. Hematite... Hematite's gonna take out his brellish coins and go over and just be like, Hey, what's up? I'm Hematite. Here, you're welcome. For me? For me, what? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then leave. Not, that's it. Rizian gives a puzzled look to Istvan, and then shrugs and puts the gold in his pocket. Cats do not understand the concept of debt bondage, but he means well. <laughs> <laughs> that's all the levity I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that as the group starts to disperse a little bit, Alfonso would probably look down to his arm. You are quite a troublemaker, even in death, Fratelli, but you are worth it. I hardly see how this is my fault, Alfonso. Fratelli, this couldn't be more your fault. The dragon said, I come for Luciano. This is, uh, no, you are right. This is not your fault, per se, but, ah, what am I saying? You are speaking to me. Yes. This is... Wonderful news. Forget about the dragon. We beat the dragon. Dragon go bye-bye. I am so happy for telling you are here. I'm happy to be here too. Happy to be in my life. It's a tricky one, that one. But we are getting close. I can feel it. I think we are getting closer and closer to Stormreach. What happens in Stormreach? Well, the same thing I thought would happen in Sharn. The same thing I thought would happen in the jungle. But it will happen in Stormreach. We get you out of this armor, this gem, we get you back to Luciano with your own legs and what have you. We go back to Tervalistas. My own legs? Surely my body is long gone by now. What the legs? Details, fratelli, details. We figure those out later. Maybe we get you better legs, who knows, but your own ones, not mine. I do love you, but I am sick of sharing. You have no idea, fratelli. Okay, at this point, let's get back on the road. On the road again? You guys know that fratelli means brothers, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's Fratello would be the singular. Yep. That's the problem with this elvish part. That's why you get it wrong. You're just doing what sounds good? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it's not because I was raised in the U.S. and don't know proper Italian. It's because he's part elf. Commitment to the character. Of course, of course. That's right. That's why I'm doing it, too. Right. Yeah, that's the same All thing. Right, great. It's not because I'm just echoing Jeppy's half-assed Italian. Yeah, but on-point Italian elvish. Of course. Right. Makes perfect sense. Okay, so as the expedition's getting ready to move on from this place, Rizian is going to say to Istvan and Alfonso, we have some financial matters to settle when we get back to Stormreach. Very curious what our bonus will be for slaying the dragon. I am sure quite hefty. (laughs) Well, that we can get into. We'll do a debriefing at the university club when we get back. Perfecto. And Clacky is going to do some clacking. And walk on down the road. I can't stay mad at this guy. Oddly enough, Clacky walks back in the direction you came from. Naturally. (laughs) No surprise there. That would have been my next guess, is go back the way we came. Hematite's like, whoa, what the heck is that thing? This is a mantis folk. I'm sure he's seen them before, but he's never been like, that's a thing. He wouldn't have ever been able to converse with the mantis folk, so... Maybe no reason to ever remember that they exist, but they're all over Stormreach. I want to run up to Clacky as he's walking away. Hey, my name's Hematai. What's yours? Clacky's going to look down at you. Cool. And then look back up to the path. Did you click? Yeah. (laughs) Clacky's going to look down at you again, not do anything, and then look back up. Hematai's just making random clicking noise, (laughs) hoping to converse. I'm literally waiting for anyone else to interrupt this. I don't help people dig their own holes. I can attest to that. What they say is true. So you walk back in the direction you approached this house from, but it does look unfamiliar. This is actually not the direction you came from. It's a different thing, but, you know, traveler's curse. At this point in the adventure, no one's surprised. Give me a survival check for maybe the last time. That's not bad. 18. It's actually quite good. Dirty 20. 19. I got a 14. Okay. Good rolls all around. Yeah, your journey is relatively unimpeded. It's a little afternoon at this point. You're walking along this road, which is gradually getting less rough and less patchy. It's just a wide dirt road at this point. Trees on either side. You're walking in what appears to be a straight line. Friend hematite, do you... Expect you will see your former company again when we reach the civilization ahead of us. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Absolutely, definitely. Uh huh. <laughs> Very good. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. I love Storm. Fresh. He doesn't know what the, where we're going. <laughs> reach? Storm Reach, you mean to say? Uh huh. Yeah, that's totally what I said. Storm Reach, yeah. Dear, I was thinking you would simply say that you are fond of storms. Storms are cool too. Love storms. Yeah. Except one time, I was on a boat and there's this storm. That wasn't so good. But. We're, like, not on the ocean, so we should be fine. But you do have a way to find your kin again. Oh, like, no. They pretty much just, like, show up whenever. You know, when I gotta, like, go somewhere, they'll be there. Like, it's not, it's not, it's no big deal. It'll be fine. Hey, did I give you a scale yet? I you did. Do you want another scale? No, no, that... And he gives you another scale. I accept it. <laughs> I just hope they won't go hungry without you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, those guys are terrible fighters. They couldn't fight anything. Whatever, they'll be fine. When they get hungry, they'll find me again, and then I'll get them some food. As you're walking, the whole expedition's here, weary, traveling for a few weeks now. Gallant is going to jog up to Isfahan and Alfonso. You'll need to tell me everything that happened. I had assumed you were missing. I need to fill in these chapters in my book about the harrowing rescue operation and how we brought you back to Stormreach. After all, the hope was lost. Tell me everything that happened. Ah, I can tell you how the story ends. It ends with me asking you how much money you make from this book. Now that is a confidential matter, you understand. No, I do not understand. Well, I suppose, uh, no, I do understand, because you see the details of our adventure. Mayhaps they are also confidential, you speak of. <laughs> I see. You drive a hard bargain. All right. Well, when we get back to Stormreach, we can write up a contract, if that's really how you want to do this. Let us see what the sum is, but in this contract, perhaps we give some funds to our mutual friend, Rizian. We sort out some other problem. We can see about that. I'll give you a teaser, though. There are many giants. But if you want more, contract. Roll persuasion. 23. <laughs> Jesus. What? I am proficient. Yeah, all right. Fine. We'll draw something up when we get back. <laughs> Zinni, did you get a good drawing of that dragon? He moves along. All right. So after a while, you come across this ridge. You can see down into this valley. It's a river. There's actually a few boats going in both directions, up and down the river. And this, at this point, is something recognizable. This is where you first set off from Stormreach into the continent. You are nearing the city. And after not too long, you start to see other people walking on this road. What a fascinating scene. Should we put Warden's disguise on before we get into town? We did spend a lot of time making that disguise. Yeah, I think we should. Signor Eurizian. Yes. When we were separated from you, we spent a not insignificant amount of time fashioning a disguise kit for our good friend Signor Warden here. Now, we can either take a moment to fashion him in such disguise, or do you think there is some protection afforded to him by this expedition? What type of protection? I do understand. You have apologized, and your guilt, I get it, but we'd like to make sure that no one does to him what you attempted to do. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of unscrupulous types in Stormbridge. I can't say for certain you'll be safe. No one really is there. Okay, it is disguise time. Signori, let's dress you up for the ball, huh? Perhaps you are right, Alfonso. We should not want to alarm these fine people just yet. And perhaps refrain from speaking in public, if you can. Or try to mimic my voice, only because I want to hear it. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Warden, you can put on this disguise. It goes over your stone plate. Makes you look a lot like these Warforged House Caneth brand constructs. Very big and bulky, but good construction. You really do look a lot like one of these things. It's a DC 25 check Whoa. to determine that you are not what you seem to be. Cool. That is a good job from Miyamichi Eastman and I. Yes, very good. World class craftsman jeep. All right, you travel on a little ways further along this river up on this ridge. On this road, you see some people traveling. You see an adventuring party trekking out into the wilderness. 
a group of four mantis folk walking in a straight line. You see a mining caravan, and uh, a little ways ahead, there's a sign. Stormreach, two to ten miles ahead. <laughs> and as you pass by the sign, you see on the reverse, it says, Beware the Traveler's Curse. Yeah, I'll see. All right, so it's getting to be late afternoon now. You are getting closer to the city here. You're walking through, like, a shanty town now. Shacks and huts of all different sizes, little tiny ones and giant-sized ones. And these are inhabited. There's people around off the sides of the road. A couple of different branching paths off this road now as you're walking towards what looks like more of a populated city-type area in the distance ahead of you, but you're not yet close enough to make out any specific details. Compared to the giant city, which was the last real populated place that I saw before I wound up in this time, how big is this place? Stormreach? Yeah. It's not that big. Okay. You were at this giant city in mm-hmm. the Cataclysm. It's even by giant standards, a big city. Made only bigger by the fact that it was a giant city. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. All right. So, pretty soon, you arrive here in Stormreach. You crest a hilltop. And you can see down into this city, you can see a lot of different buildings and structures of different construction, mostly made of wood. As you look closely, a lot of them seem to be made of salvaged ship parts. You see some that are really tall, some that are smaller. And from this vantage point above the city, you can see the storm giant statue that you saw approaching the harbor last time from over the sea, overlooking this cove and the harbor within. There's these huge boats anchored out at sea, some medium and smaller ships anchored at the docks. Make a perception check. Round of perception checks. That's going to be a no. I was going to say something to Luciano saying that we made it, but uh, on a four, I don't know if we have. (laughs) He would take an 18. 15. You can see on that 15, and you would also recognize that below this top layer of structures and buildings, Stormreach is a city that's built atop giant ruins. You can see that there are just these enormous structures. They're ancient. A lot of them are collapsed. Some of them are still standing. Some of them are used as the basis for other buildings. Some of them, the rubble's been rebuilt into other stuff. This is an ancient giant city destroyed with another city built over the top of it. Built on the remains of a giant city. Remarkable. Croswell will offer a bit of context. Yes, the giants inhabited this place for millennia before the downfall of their civilization, and then it was uninhabited for many, many, many years. It was used as a pirate hideout for a few centuries before about a century and a half ago it was repurposed into the city of Stormreach. It's used as a trading hub, a hub of activity. And so you can, as you're making your way now into the city, these are pretty narrow, winding streets. Rizian will say, watch your pockets. Warden pats his stone thighs to check to see if he even has any pockets. Did we build pockets into the disguise, Alfonso? I don't think we would have. Probably not. <laughs> Only if they are ardenti. <laughs> but I don't think so. Along the way, has there been any talk of where the expedition wants to go once in Stormreach? Yeah. Yeah, they've said, I think, twice now. University Club is where the debriefing will happen. Okay. All right. So I'm going to need each of your passive perceptions, please. 13. 12. I also have a 13. 14. Alfonso, the wisest among us. And not very wise at all. (laughs) So, yeah, as Rizian says that, all four of you look around and immediately just notice. They notice that you saw them and they are not going to pickpocket you right now. Ah, not today. What do they look like? Do we know where they are? This is a very young looking half elf, tattered clothing, bare feet. Hematite notices that they were going to pickpocket them and then makes direct eye contact and growls a little in their throat. (laughs) Roll intimidation. (laughs) Okay. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) It's a nine. (laughs) They look at you and go, shoo, shoo. Go away. Hey, you go away. (laughs) You could talk. Yeah, you could talk. Get out of here. (laughs) Okay, bye. (laughs) Wow. Oh, man. I had an entirely different idea of how to approach that, but boy, am I glad I didn't speak up. (laughs) 
So you make your way through these crowded winding streets, up some stairs, down some stairs, around some corners. You kind of get lost in this crowd momentarily, and you eventually find your way to the university club. This is a three-story apartment house. It's got the crest of the university on the front door. That's a little bit run down from the outside, but you can walk up to the door. Croswell opens the door, lets you inside into this well-appointed parlor. Wooden accents and a room off to the side. There's a library, quite a few shelves over there. There's a dining area. There's some stairs up to other areas. And so here we are. This place is pretty cool. Yuli and Orlat are going to immediately start unpacking these bags of holding and portable holes and start to stack up some crates and barrels and sacks and things on one side of the room. Rizian is going to set up at this table in this main sitting room. He's going to take an abacus out of his bag and some books and paperwork and things. Is there anybody else in here when we walked in? There are a few other academics around, a couple sitting in the library, none that pay you any mind. Of course. And is any academic worth their salt? <laughs> they heard the door. They're not even in the room. They didn't even see you come in. Shall we do this now? Lord. Have a seat. Alfonso sits down. I'm hoping there's a stool. Otherwise, Alfonso will look up to Warden, hoping that Warden may... At this table... There are medium-sized chairs, and then there's also a few chairs that have books already stacked up on them, where gnomes were probably sitting. (laughs) All right, I'll snag one of those. Hematite sits next to Alfonso on a book chair. Okay. Eastman, Signori Warden, sit next to us. Yeah, I come sit. It's like it's middle school lunch, baby. We're all going to be in a little friend group. Hell yeah. I remain standing behind the three of them. (laughs) Y'all don't need to be here. This is going to be boring. (laughs) Rizian's gonna look over at Hematite. This is just business. You don't need to be here for this. Oh, no, it's cool. I do business all the time. I'm really good at business. I def- You definitely want me to be here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come, Hematite. Let's play some cards. Oh, hell yeah. He's already off the thing. He's getting out his packs of cards. He's like sitting down right in front of Warden. He doesn't even care. Who else wants in? We're going to play three rounds of poker, Jack, Texan, hold it up. And everything is <laughs> on the table. <laughs> right here on the floor. Come on. Poker, Jack, Texan. Texan. <laughs> hold up. <laughs> That's definitely some backwater village in Zendrig. That's pretty good. Do you go anywhere? Where are you going? I'm right next to wherever Warden is. I just find an empty nook. Okay. Alfonso, you want in? It's fun. Who's in? Let's go. Later, Hematite. So Warden and Hematite, you can probably go in like a little recess like windowsill. Do whatever you're going to do. Hey, Warden, have you ever played this game before? (laughs) I was traveling across time and space while you were playing this game. Unfortunately, I missed it the first time. Okay, so the rules are really simple. I will come back to this. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, first, there's a matter of your salaries. Unfortunately, I can't pay you for the entire duration of the expedition, you being not present for much of it. But by my calculation, you were with us for 11 days. So that's one gold each for 11 days. So make a note of that there. You had mentioned... That you wanted some type of bonus for defeating the dragon? I'm not authorized to disperse something like that, but if you'd like to make a claim with the house, I'm sure they could find a way to give you some hazard pay. And then there's the matter of the treasure that you found when you were with us. Let's see here. We have 26 giant gold coins, 59 gold worth of Eberron Dragon Shard, a scroll of Spider Climb, Dust of Disappearance... Oh, that's what the dust dust. was. I still have dust in pot. Literally just going to (laughs) say. With a dash and then no detail next to it. Dust in pot, yes. Istvan, it was you that found these things, yes? I believe we were all together down in the tunnels, Alfonso and I. I see. Okay. Well, I can offer you fair payment for these items, or you can buy them out from the house. It's your choice. Signor Eurasian. Yes? In our travels, I found myself very inspired by... Three peculiar characters. Did you ever think to perhaps just steal from House Convrac? <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and you have the bags of holding. I've heard it makes it very easy. <laughs> oh my god! Chubby! <laughs> oh, this was 
play smart characters. Is there an immediate face Rizian's making? Is it the face you're making? <laughs> Let me describe it then. <laughs> Rizian's face freezes as though he's considering your words very carefully. Okay. All right. Let this ride then. <laughs> I don't know of anyone who's ever gotten away with stealing from House Kamiya. Eh, maybe that is why it's in the radio and not real life. <laughs> oh, well. Sounds like a work of fiction to me. Looking down at his own arm. But sometimes life is stranger than. Quite. Isvan grinning at Alfonso's scheme. I can't think of any use that I would have for such items. However, there are different kinds of stealing, as I've come to understand. And it's my belief that you can't steal something that someone doesn't really know they ever had possession of. Am I right? Hmm. I suppose. Where's this going? You're the one who's supposed to make an accounting of everything that's been found here. I don't know who's going to verify the accuracy of that accounting. Amici Istvan is right. I mean, after all, it could just be another day at the office. God damn it. <laughs> you know, embezzlement is a very serious matter within the house. People have been executed for less. <sighs> I wouldn't dare. What is it that you're suggesting here, anyway? Oh, well, uh, I don't know. Well, out with it. Surely you all found many valuable things among the giant ruins when we were off in the jungle. Perhaps you set aside a crate of them enough to settle your debt and leave them off the manifest when we return. And perhaps we can work through independent channels to try and sell them, and then we can settle your debt. Now, there will probably be some inquiry into how you came by that money, so we'll need some sort of way to launder it, but surely there's some way we can make this work, eh? That's very bold of you, Istvan, and I appreciate you looking out for me like that, but I just don't see a way I get away with that, to be quite honest. They always find out. It's bad enough that I've already added him, he gestures to the Green Warden in the corner, to the manifest, and now I'm needing to mark it unrecovered. They'll want an explanation for that. So I think it's best not to get too creative with our accounting here. Then I guess our business is concluded. I guess it is then, yes. He presents each of you with a piece of paper with the Kundarak seal on it. Alfonso, yours is for 11 gold. And Istvan, yours is for 339 gold. The fuck? Because yours has the treasure from the ruin that day. You can redeem these at the house enclave in town. All right. Okay. So then, what are the rules of this game of cards? It's super simple, dude. What have you got on you? Prepare to fucking lose it. (laughs) (laughs) Hematite's going to take out... Probably eight pages of your character sheet filled with random ass items. No, actually, I'm very meticulous about what Hematite really cares about his little trinkets. Straw, comma, bent. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, we can talk about this for days, but I have a shark tooth, a garnet, a ruby, a mummified mouse, three weird stones. Tabletop content. Okay, okay, Save it for ahead. table talk. So while this is happening, somebody from the other room, someone you don't know, is going to kind of wander through this space. It's, let's see here my table. Nutella? You're never gonna let that go, are you? It was so fucking embarrassing. It's a halfling scholar, dressed in a three-piece suit, necktie tucked into the vest, looking straight down at a book as they walk through this space, and don't notice you at all. Hematite doesn't give a shit. Okay. (laughs) The halfling might give a shit if they saw a robot (laughs) playing cards with a cat. (laughs) (laughs) Hence my point. Warden pulls out a stone sword ski. I mean, a dagger. How big is it? It is a simple dagger. It would be kind of nice. I don't think I've ever used them, but this is in line with the javelins that come out of my arm. I can also Mm. produce daggers from beneath the stone plates. You just produce them? <laughs> like teeth? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. Is it six inches? Because to hematite, a dagger is like a full sword. Yeah, to hematite, it's the size oh, of a short sick. sword. Okay, hematite's going to take out his brass bell from his pocket and jingle it in front of you. Uh-huh. Okay, now we're talking. So he puts the bell next to the sword because <laughs> those are the same to him. That looks oddly familiar. But very well. Awesome. Now what? Now we take these cards and he gives some to you and then he has some. Jimmy, you want to take it away from here? 
Okay. So it's Hematite's card game. It's a D20. That's it? We just roll it? You add your gaming set proficiency, Hematite. And I'm going to pull <laughs> yes. out the blue dice for this. The only time I will ever advocate oh, for blue no. dice. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Holy shit, that is anime villain territory. What does that mean? That means a 20. Yes! No, but it was good. What was it? It was an 18. Uh, I was hoping I'd rubbed my bad luck all over it in our home game. Impossible. <laughs> it is immune. Mine was also an 18. <gasps> what? Wow, it's a draw. No. What? Jimmy, what happens if I'm lying? <laughs> well, now you have to roll deception. And Andy has to roll insight. I think okay. Human type's lying. He's going to say he has an 18. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Why did you say 18 if you're lying? <laughs> yeah, say 19. Because I'm a bad liar. Me, Alexa, is not good at lying. <laughs> so you thought, oh, if I lie about tying, they may believe me. But then you realize I have to admit to it because it's D&D and I have to roll a dice to lie. <laughs> All right, Hematite, how was the lie? 11. <laughs> what was your insight, Andy? That's a 13. Oh. You can tell Hematite's lying when he said 18. <sighs> Friend, Hematite. Yeah? Are you being honest? No. Wow. Character growth. <laughs> <laughs> You got me, dude. <laughs> Good job. You won. You won the game. You won my tiny, shiny brass bell. You want to play again? Let's play one more time. He deals another deck. I'd like to hope that Alfonso caught Hematite handing over the brass bell, finally losing the game, and just smirked, and then went back to the business with Rizian. I believe I have mastered this game, though it was quite enjoyable. Yeah. I believe this is how commerce works. <laughs> and I give Hematite the dagger. Nice. <gasps> Whoa, that's awesome, dude. A fair exchange of goods. <laughs> you know, that's super true, because if you give that brass bell to like, anybody, you're going to get whatever you want, dude. That's a really special bell, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just at this point I just whatever hematite says is just fine. Okay. Oh my god. It's getting a little later now. It's early evening. The sun's starting to go down. You can see out in the street there's these overhead lanterns starting to light. The streets are thinning out a little bit. And Croswell will say, you're welcome to stay here at the University Club. The next passenger transport doesn't go back to Sharn for another three days, so we're going to be here for a bit. Help yourself to the facilities, the library, the dining. Dining sounds good. May I ask a favor of you, Professor? Sure. Istvan. I'm sure you have much cataloging to do of all of your finds, but if you do find a spare moment, you would probably know better how to navigate this library and look into the matters we discussed regarding the prophecy. Sure, I can help you with that, certainly. We'll look into that first thing tomorrow. You have my thanks. You know, I came all this way and found no answers, but something tells me that they were in front of me from the beginning. Professore, I'd like to take a look into these books with you, if I may. First thing tomorrow, Alfonso. Sure thing. And Croswell is going to go upstairs. And Rizian, as he's packing up his things at the table here, is going to say, you know, after our run-in a couple of weeks ago, I happened to look into automatons and constructs a bit. Do you know that the most valuable ancient construct in the appraisal record was the Sulatar Walking Man? A functioning automaton capable of following simple orders. It was actually giant-sized. It was one of the first working automatons ever unearthed. It made headlines around the world, but it only sold for 40,000 gold. And that was like a century ago. So whatever this is, and he gestures to Warden once more. I feel like that's probably more in the category of, he runs his finger down the page, this here. And he points to an entry for construct of medium size of giant manufacture. That's the closest thing I could find. 12,000 gold. Median of 43 of them sold per year between fiscal year 950 and 960, and that estimate presumes museum quality preservation, and for this old thing, <laughs> 12,000 might even be generous. This old truck. So for now, he's designated unrecovered, and I'm sure nobody's gonna come looking for him. Very good. Man, that's good shit. <laughs> Just like a crunchy lore, but <laughs> yeah, all this wonder shit. and mystique wrapped in. Yeah, he's like a line item. It's probably worth 12 grand. We don't really care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this old truck? Yeah, no, nah, we don't do whatever. Ain't no gas in it. <laughs> 
That will be a dated meme by the time this episode comes out. Rizian's going to finish packing up and leave out the front door. Anything you want to do tonight before bed? You know, Tate flips his little coin in the air. You want to play cards? Is there a bar in this club? There is a bar, but it's not a open to the public bar. It's probably used for private events. Okay. Also, there's a dining room with a fully appointed kitchen, but no chef on duty. So you can find something to eat. It's a stocked kitchen, but no one's cooking right now. I was going to say, there's no smoke room in this expedition clubhouse. (laughs) Oh, of course there is. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There's more than one library in this building. This is definitely a building with some studies and some other things you'd expect in a place like this. If there's a window or something near where we are, I am just curious as to what the constellations look like now after everything that happened with the dragon and all of the Onatar stuff we saw. Yeah. So, Warden, where do you want to look at the sky from? If there's not a balcony or anything, I'll just try and find the window to look out. There is a balcony. This is a three-story building, and you can find a balcony on the third floor. And just look straight up at the sky. Religion check. Warden finds this balcony, and first, he looks down over this city scene. A little uneasy, but then looks up and rolls a 14. On a 14, you can see this constellation of Falazur is now not as prominent. It's dispersed a little bit. You do still see Anatar here, hmm. as well as his two sons, and Kol Karan, son of Anatar, who was in retreat last time, mm-hmm. has now taken notice, turned back, and is facing him once more. Anatar is still restraining Kol Tarant the keeper you don't see the figure of chronepsis at this point on 14 that's what you see very interesting and warden will go back inside and try and find some quiet corner to sit in peace so staying at the university club tonight is croswell landlin zinni you four and a handful of other Academics. Oh, and Gallant. Gallant is here too. So basically everyone except Rizian and his crew. Rizian and his crew went home. They live in Stormreach. Ah, I may have missed that. So, Isvan and Alfonso, you have a room here with bunk beds, door that locks. Is the room big enough for our friends? I would invite them in. Yeah, sure. They could fit in here. You get the sense that this place can accommodate a lot more people. This room that you're in has two bunk beds. It sleeps up to four. And so, yeah, however you want to do this. Yeah. I would say as we make our way for the evening, if there are no more cards to play, which I, for one, am moto stanco, no more cards for me, but Signori Hematite, Warden, you are welcome to join our room. Well, I speak for me. Amishi Istvan? My home is yours, so to speak. Yeah, I'm like so tired. And then Humatate would just do the little walks around on a rug, and he'd check it out, sniff it a bit, and then go to sleep. Just curl up into a little ball. Sure. Sleep like a cat. As he's getting ready to fall asleep and getting sleepy, Alfonso will quietly say to Luciano, Tomorrow we uh, hate the books again, but I'm very excited for you to meet the new familia. I think you like them very much. I'm excited, too. Okay, you all get a long rest. Thank fuck. Woo! Huzzah! Yeah, morning comes, light comes in this small window in your room. Down below, the streets are bustling once more. I guess today I will go cash my check over at the Kunderak Enclave. Okay. Alfonso? Heading right to the library. Okay. Istvan, you head downstairs, you walk out the university club. If you wanted to ask someone for directions or however you wanted to go about finding this place. I'll just try and find it myself with perception rather than try and rely on any of my (laughs) negative charisma skills. Okay. That's a 21 perception. Okay, on a 21 perception, you remember actually that the address of this place was on the letterhead of this piece of paper that (laughs) Rizian gave you, and you can find your way right to this place. You see this building, also a several-story row house type of building, Kundarak insignia on the door, several windows, and as you open this door to walk inside, you are met with a familiar face. Shit. Hi, Sib. Funny meeting you here. It's your brother, Bagner, And that is where we're going to end this session. Nice. <laughs> Whoa. It seems pretty, you know, pretty chill. Well, we'll, we'll see about that, Jimmy. We'll, we'll see if it's pretty chill. Oh, man. <laughs> I just can't believe we actually made it to Stormreach. 
Yeah. You guys are out of the woods. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, like, if there's brother drama, just be like, I literally fought a dragon. Brother, chill. <laughs> That's it. We just figured out the social interaction. We'll see. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me. And edited by Scala with music by Andy Berger and our by Alex O'Reilly. Thanks to our Patreon supporters and a special thanks to our Holy Avengers, May, Jake, Chris, and John. For $5 a month on Patreon, you can access every episode of Table Talk, our post-game recap show. Uh, tune in next week for our finale. That ought to be pretty uh, chill, right? Just hanging out in Stormreach. That's it. Yeah. No greater implications or dramas to play out. Not in a finale. That's ridiculous. Thanks for listening.